Mercedes is really synonymous with performance, luxury and style as well as durability. However, unfortunately there have been a few trash cars along the way. I've actually owned one in this list of five Mercedes-Benz vehicles you want to avoid like the plague. Let's get into it now. Welcome back to the channel everybody, Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. And so let's start out by talking about one of the vehicles that I owned and it's just like that vehicle behind us. That's the W163 ML SUV. Now these vehicles came in a variety of different engine configurations, four cylinders, five, six cylinders, also V8s and AMG models. You could get this coupled to a five-speed automatic or a five-speed manual in certain models. Of course, it was all-wheel drive and the formatic. These were great in their day because they had unique features new to the brand. Of course, third row was available and electronic stability control was as well another feature to these vehicles. Now, sadly, they didn't get the reputation for durability and they were built in the United States, Alabama to be precise. And while they looked like state-of-the-art in the time, they had lots and lots of different problems and became a real dud in the long term. Now we enjoyed ours thoroughly. We had the ML500 with the V8 and had lots of great power but it did start to show some problems. Let's walk through some of ours as well as some problems you can find. You had transfer case issues, you had transmission sticking in gear which was always a problem for these. Other than the fact that they rust like a sieve, you had power door lock issues, sunroof coming off the rail, you've got O2 sensors as well as the crankshaft sensor which we had to take the wheel off and fix that from under there. You get misfires from clock catalytic converters, mass airflow sensors or ignition coils were always a problem and we had those as well. Power steering lines and hoses and leaks with that. The plastic was very fragile in this vehicle as well on the outside and inside where things like ashtrays and cup holders would start crumbling apart in your hands. Fuel pump, water pump and where do we end with this? troubles all the way from end to end. And the next proverbial brown stain on the white underwear that is Mercedes is right here. And this is the Mercedes S-Class but more specifically this is the W220 which is effectively from 1998 to 2005. Now these cars they were great they were loaded lots of great features air ride the whole nine yards everything you would expect that you should have in an S-Class Mercedes. But the biggest problem with this particular car was at the time the CEO of Daimler-Benz, Chrysler Jurgen Schrempp, decided that he was dollars and cents. He was all about profits, maximizing profits for Mercedes, maximizing profits as well for the shareholders. And as a result, it really started to rear its ugly face in different ways, and I'll show you. This one being the S500 obviously is the V8 version. Now, unfortunately with these cars, the transmissions in these, in these S-Classes were just too soft and weak. And the transmissions were very prone to failure, particularly when you coupled it up with the V8 engines, the engines of more capacity. Not only that, fit and finish were always, always suspect in these. Plastic, what did not hold up as it should in a, in a modern day Mercedes. Obviously, there's all kinds of parts and pieces that just would tend to come apart. As well as the airmatic suspension would fail, lots of expensive components to keep that leveling system working and that was a known failure point as well with these. Rust, look at that. That was a very, very well-known issue with these cars and of course, it shouldn't rust. Some of these cars were known to rust at two, three years of age. Highly unacceptable for a car of this magnitude. Mercedes, what were you thinking? And unfortunately at this time, BMW and Audi made strides and actually gained some market share on the Benz brand. You want to find out what the most notoriously unreliable Mercedes in recent years has been? How about the X164 GL SUV right there? So besides just the problems with the diesel version, which has actually had a problematic crank sensor, and of course the Takata airbag syndrome, which afflicted a lot of import cars. There's lots of problems from the V8 cam plug that leaks. You also had oil cooler leaks. And as well, the variable valve timing, there's an actuator there that was also commonly known to fail. Of course, you'd have sluggish riding, you'd have poor fuel economy, and it would likely spit out a code P2004. You'd have secondary air injection issues there. You'd have leaking sunroofs. The rear tailgate would stop working at times. And you could even get low engine oil levels even when it was verified and there was actually adequate oil in there. These things were absolutely notorious. If it wasn't one thing, it was actually another. Very nice, fully equipped, but very problematic. And the next of the undesirable Mercedes goes to here. Next we have that extremely oddball R-Class. Nothing else like it in the lineup. For 2006 to 2015 model years, this is their idea of a family cruiser. Not sure if it's a minivan, not sure if it's an SUV, but I am sure it's pretty ugly. Beyond that, it's also got a lot of issues, but it drives like a golf cart. Let's talk about some of the weird issues. Well, first of all, of course, turbo actuators are problematic. So that will spit out a code and you can actually wind up with actuator issues and or turbo replacements completely. How about the early onset of rust in these cars? That happens frequently, often at the bottom of the doors 
or at the trunk lid suspension, particularly on the front end. If you look at the front end suspension, it's hard to tell, but there's springs and they're known to crack and split and break. And if they do, you can get banging noises, you can get clunking, but most importantly, you'll find the car starts to lean a little bit on that corner. How about a mass airflow? That's another common failure. And it manifests itself in ways of reduced power and poor acceleration. So it's pretty obvious this wasn't a well-sorted vehicle. There was lots of problems along the way and the frequency of the problems was the bigger, more telling issue. So not sure what Mercedes was trying to do other than trying to fill a market Market demand looks like there was a swing and a miss and what do we have over here generally the c-class mercedes is a welcome addition to the model lineup this is the w202 version which is essentially built from 1993 to 2000 model years it can include a variety of different engine configurations and models called the c180 the c200 220 c230 as well as the c250 now these are lower end and as well they are generally more affordable but unfortunately with this situation you have a sad build quality that was commensurate of the cost and that shouldn't always be the case not only that, unless you went for the larger engine configurations, you found these cars to be very underpowered. And with weight up to 3,400 pounds, it certainly couldn't really get out of its own weight because it was just a tank as well. Rust? Yeah, you bet. Rust was a major problem in this area. Unfortunately, it was difficult to keep the rust off. Even if you kept it stored in a dry garage, it always found ways to start to rust. But not only that. There's lots of issues, mechanical issues that have led to ownership disgruntlement. And basically we're talking about rough engine idle, poor acceleration, hard shifting, poor fueling, obviously which led to some of this poor drivability issues. How about exploding batteries? That was a common one from hydrogen ventilation that was lacking. Also power window failures was another big one and mass airflow failures were also a problem which often led to the poor running operation of these vehicles. As well, the damper pulley failed which led to stress on the crankshaft pulley and ultimately resulted in a failure there. Unfortunately, this was one of the dog eras of the C-Class and fortunately Mercedes has slowly progressed to a point where the C-Class is a much better vehicle than the generation of the W202. And saying all that, of course, you're gonna to wanna to check out that video and learn out why Mercedes are so cheap on the used car market. Hope to see you real soon. Catch you then, bye-bye.